10 things you are doing wrong in Rainbow Six Siege. In this video, I point out your common mistakes that make you lose either gunfights or rank games, even the ones you solo queue. It doesn't matter if you're low rank or high rank like Diamond and Champ. These are general things that anyone can do and has to fix it to become a better player. If you like this type of videos and want me to do more than 10 mistakes, then let's get this video to 1k like and I'll do another one. Let's get to it. Let's begin with the mistake that most players make, and that's staying super close to the cover when they want to hold an angle. This is how perspective works. If you're too close to the wall or door frame, then you can't see your enemy peeking you, and that's why most of the times you die to someone you don't see or was behind the wall for you. When you're close, then your body sticks out and they can easily see it and get a free kill. What you have to do to fix this is simply go a bit back and far from that cover. By doing that, first of all, you can see your enemy as soon as he peeks and also you're not exposing yourself. So make sure to hold tight angles but far from the cover to increase your chance of winning the gunfight. Next common mistake I see from Siege players, even high rank ones, is that they make too much sound, whether when they are roaming offside or when it's 1v1 clutch situation. Sometimes they don't push too much because they are scared that what if they make sound and enemy hears their footsteps. First of all, by running you are giving away free info and they know exactly where to push and aim. What you should do more in your games is alt walk, which is holding your alt and moving. This way you make less sound and it's harder for the enemy to know your position and you might get more kills and clutch more rounds because of it. For the second part which some players are scared to make sound, you have to remember that gunshots, recharges, explosions and maybe even teammate callouts can cover sound in this game. So those are good times to push and take advantage because your footsteps can get covered by other sounds in the game. Number 3 is not playing with or off your teammates. Playing off them means either being right behind your teammates to refract them, which means as soon as they die, you should get a kill to bring back the man advantage, or the second option, push solo from somewhere that the enemy is not contesting, because they are distracted to your teammates. Both of them work really well, even when you solo queue. Just like how I push with Blitz to support them, and when he took control of Bakery, I was ready for Ace refract. However, playing with them means helping them to take care of Mute on the wall for example, like how I rappelled on stage window to get the jammers so they can push into piano. Or we can say the same thing with Blitz round. You might have the worst teammates in the world but there's always a way you can use them and get things to your advantage so stop rushing alone in the first 20 seconds of the round because you'll be helping the enemy team more moving on to another thing you're doing wrong in Rainbow Six Siege and that's sitting outside as a defender and not holding entries now i'm not saying to get outside as far as you can and come back when there's 30 seconds left no in every map there are different entries and those are where the attackers push from instead of sitting outside being afk you want to contest that area to waste time and utility and also make it hard for them to take map control for example on cop house i play mute get into stock and open the hatch I want to shoot some drones, hold them up for 30-40 seconds, and drop the hatch to escape. Or on border, because we are defending bathroom, the main door is one of the entries to the site. So by holding it, we can waste time and utility and increase our chance of winning. If there are too many ways for the attackers to push, barricading or barbed wire or any type of gadget like Melusi or Fenry to slow them down and let us know sooner would be also really good. The main reason why you lose to an Ash in the first 1 minute is because you are not covering those entry points and they push without worrying about any type of trap or player to stop them. Next up is your situational awareness. Your teammate next to you might be fighting someone but you are too focused on the door in front of you that you won't realize anything. Most of the solo queue players want callouts from their team, but they have no situational awareness themselves. Because if they had, they would have known where the enemies are based on teammate outlines, gunshots, default cams outside, and sound in general. What you also have to pay attention to is kill feed which you get on top right. This gives you immediate info on your teammate being dead by whom. Because you can see the gun icon and you can hear the gunshot most of the times. And sometimes get help from compass. Something else you should do is look around once in a while to get a good understanding of where your teammate are playing and what they are covering. Like this round, as soon as I heard Ash gunshot, I flanked to help Solis, and when I turned back to cover my flank, I looked at the kill feed and realized that Solis behind me on service died. So I need to be careful. Number 6 is over peeking and just playing aggressive when you don't need to. These days, especially in the gun meta which everyone only wants to peek and shoot, without any type of strategy, players get worse and worse in terms of playing smart when they face actual good players, or they throw more rounds and games like this. Most of the rounds in rank are considered a troll. Why? Well, because you only want to run off bomb site and pick your enemies without even using your utility, which can be a zombie keyboards or florist retro drums. That's why usually rounds end in the first one minute, because there's no strategy involved. So what you want to do is play smarter by picking better ops like Zero, Buck, Zombie so you can use your gadget and put more pressure and play every round with a plan or strategy in mind. Moving on to number 7, we have not using our time correctly. Some of you stay on the roof or outside for a long time that even when you actually take map control, it's too late and you gotta push side with 30 seconds left. You all know how to open the walls but when it comes down to next step, you all get stuck looking at the breach. Siege basics are simple, throw a drone, get info and now either outplay the enemy by using your utility and gadget or 
start pushing and take the gunfight. But don't sit back cause nothing will happen if you just hold an angle. If it's really hard to take control of one side of the map, then rotate super quick to somewhere that the opponent is not contesting. On the other hand, for defenders, you have to learn how to waste more time. And in the last seconds of the round, play hide and seek to make attackers go for the plant. And since they are low on time, you can take advantage of them. Not using your drone properly is going to be number 8. You either don't drone yourself in or you don't even have a pre-place cam in the map. What you do instead is run to the side to find the bomb or the ops. Which you don't have to because based on sound and gunshots you can easily figure out what ops they are playing and which side they are. Also what I see from players is that they don't quick quick with their drone or basically keep it hidden. Even if you have one drone in pocket make sure to use the active one as much as you can and don't let it get shot. Info is everything in this game and the more info you have well obviously you play better. Not checking and picking angles one by one is also common mistakes each players make. You might think this game is not like Valorant or CSGO that you have to pick all the angles. Well actually it is. There are tons of angles in Rainbow Six maps that the enemy can pick you from and get an easy kill. To win more gunfights you want to pick them one by one without skipping any of them. I'm going to show you guys two examples. First one is Bok on Coastline where I'm checking first the angle to the left side of Cocktail, then by the bomb, then right side of Cocktail and then peak holes by Hookah Ball. With Azami on Consulate I check bridge left side, then right side and basically all the time when I'm moving around Around, I'm placing my crosser on the angles in the map. So in case my enemy peeks, I don't have to adjust my crosser anymore and just shoot to get the free kill. And last thing you're doing wrong number 6 siege is not playing every map correctly. For each map you want to do or have two pushes for each side. I see so many players that don't know where to attack or where to hold on coastline for example. They are completely lost. My tip is get into custom game, get to know the maps better, where to cut off, where to make rotates and how can you push to win more rounds. Watching good streamers and youtubers also give you ideas on how to play all maps. There are default takes like clubhouse which you open cctv breach then open garage walls build a guy on catwalk with your utility and push up to finally get into cc and plant the bomb On, uh, behind the servers, behind the servers. Nice. And that's it for today's video. Hope it was helpful to you guys, and if it was, make sure to like and subscribe. Until the next video, stay safe.